It's safe to say that we're currently at an extremely important point in history. The 9-11 attacks left us with little freedoms and little privacy. Well, after these first few months of 2020, the Constitution is suspended. The most cherished amendment, I guess maybe this, the most cherished or the least under attack, the first, is completely gutted, and uh, many are celebrating it. I'm sure you guys heard the figurative sound of the digital printing press is turning on, too. The Servile Society is certainly in for a shock over the coming years. Along with this comes increased regulations as the parasite scumbags in Congress pull out another pre-written piece of legislation, just waiting for the appropriate tragedy or crisis. Stimulus packages, further invasions of privacy by the surveillance and police states in the name of stopping the spread of respiratory illness, really, the list goes on and on and will continue into the now unwritten future. Needless to say, resistance to tyranny has never been more important. Without it, this draconian bullshit will continue unabated, and again, actually encouraged in the name of public health, even by some alleged anarchists. Now, when I say resistance, do I mean something like this? The police have been telling everybody they're going to shoot if we don't move back. People are moving forward with their hands in the air, holding flags with both hands in the air. It's a mixture of people on foot, as you can see, people on foot and cowboys. Or this. this manual is published for the information and guidance of all our friends and should be used as the basic doctrine for sedition and subversion training in preparation for active simple sabotage as a precursor to the ethics-based selective irregular warfare that will act as the final blow to the state. Well, there are obviously both options, but no. The most efficacious form of resistance actually doesn't require confrontation. It's called VANU. VANU is a freedom strategy that was largely developed by Tom Marshall, a libertarian from the 1960s and 70s, also pseudonymously named Rayo and El Rey. VANU is an awkward contraction of the words voluntary, not vulnerable, the goal being to become as invulnerable to the coercion of the state and the servile society as possible. This is done by way of lifestyle changes in pursuance of freedom. Examples include van nomadism, living out of a vehicle of some sort in a city or rural area. If you want more information on that, we did an entire series on it uh, over uh, on the VANU podcast. Minimal sailboating, uh, live out of a sailboat, uh, likely in international waters a lot of time. Uh, Off-grid homesteading, this is uh, what I'm working towards, actually. Uh, basically making these uh, 22 acres wholly self-sufficient, or as uh, self-sufficient as I can. Uh, power, water, food, etc. Perpetual traveling, uh, utilizing the tourist legal interstices of uh, countries and traveling often. Great for minimizing tax burden, theft burden, really, and uh, maximizing wealth in general. Uh, this is called the Five Flag Theory, uh, which I wrote about in my book, Vanu, a Strategy for Self-Liberation. This is from my book, Vanu, A Strategy for Self-Liberation, which can be picked up at libertyunderattack.com. Uh, so, quote, what is the five flag theory? It's a way for an individual to not be considered a legal resident of any of the countries they spend time or operate in, and therefore is a way to avoid the legal obligations that come with it. The flags are as follows. Number one, passport citizenship in a country that does not tax money earned outside the country or attempt to control actions outside of its jurisdiction. Two, legal residence in a tax haven. Three, business base where one earns money, ideally somewhere with low corporate tax rates. Asset haven where one keeps their money, ideally somewhere with the low taxation of passive income and capital gains. Number five, playgrounds where one spends money, ideally somewhere with low consumption taxes. And lastly for now, we'll learn his Vanu. This was Rayo's preferred strategy. Uh, he lived out of a tent in the Siskiyou National Forest, uh, Northern California, Southern Oregon, uh, for a time. Uh, pretty self-explanatory and uh, not attractive to many, so I won't spend uh, any more time on it here. Uh, now, there are others, but uh, that's a uh, very good start. As you can see, none of these lifestyles are confrontational in nature. But when the Vanuan increases their self-sufficiency and secures their Vanu home base, they make themselves more invulnerable to coercion. 
there's one thing I want you to take away from this video, it's that. Become as self-sufficient as you possibly can in as many areas of your life as possible. Be your own doctor, nutritionist, farmer, gunsmith, etc. Relying on authorities and central points of failure is what has gotten us into this mess after all. It's time to decentralize and all the way down to the smallest minority, the individual. This is the Agora, the second realm, or in Vanu speak, a Vanu mini-culture. And confrontation is certainly an option for those that wish it, and may be a necessity at some point, but resistance doesn't require it. As Smuggler and XYZ so perfectly put it in their important work, Second Realm Book on Strategy, quote, Our strategy for liberty is the creation of a culture of liberty, a society that occupies its own protected space and implements independent systems of cooperation. We need to create a second realm. The free future is only going to exist if we build it, in both cyberspace and in physical space and time. So let's get building. If you'd like to hear more, please check out the Building the Second Realm series we did a couple of years back. We went into excruciating detail, uh, but I do think you'll enjoy it and find it valuable. I'll also point you in the direction of the free Vani Books tab at vanupodcast.com. Here you can download about a dozen free books and a couple audiobooks, uh, all on the topic of Vanu and self-liberation. You can also find them at libertyunderattack.com in both digital and paperback formats, as well as on Amazon. Thanks in advance for the support, and please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, laissez-faire. The door slammed, and B caught up to Tall Man. They walked inside together. I want to show you something that you may have never seen before. Or maybe you thought we had the technology but just never thought it was a reality. Jack kept talking as they walked up to the second floor. I'm not sure what you mean. Something our government does? Yes. After 9-11, we were given much more power to surveil citizens for any reason. Or should I say, for no reason at all.